Welcome back everybody, it's Brad again with Northern Brewer, back for another installment of Behind the Brew. Today we're going to be talking about Doppelbach, specifically our Northernator Doppelbach. Uh, it's got some rich history, so we will go over a little bit of history, we'll go over some ingredients, and we'll go over some tips and tricks to make sure you can pull this off in your brewery yourself. And before we step into the brew cave, if you like these kind of videos, the Behind the Brew, make sure you hit that like button, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell if you haven't already, and that way you can see all these videos and you know what's coming up all the time. Little history behind the Doppelbach. It was uh, hundreds of years ago. Uh, monks in Munich would actually brew this during Lent or times of fasting otherwise to get a little bit of caloric intake so they didn't have to fully fast at all. So it was a way for them to sustain themselves and without breaking their fast. So hundreds of years old, that's the history. And amazingly, it's lived to this day. When you are brewing a beer like this for the winter, you always gotta make sure you're dressed in your best winter garb. Uh, in this case, that hat kept me warm around the mash. And you know, you keep stirring that mash and just, just keep her moving that way. So what is a Doppelbach? Well, it is a very strong malty German lager. This particular recipe comes out at about 9%. We are talking Munich malt, Pilsner malt, a little bit of uh, Kara Munich 3, traditional Hallertau just for bittering, up to about 24, 25 IBU. And then uh, the star of the show is really uh, the German lager yeast. In this case, it's Omega yeast, OYL106, which is the German lager one. Everything just comes together so well. It's so rich and malty, but it's not too malty, it's not too sweet because you got that little bit of IBU in there to just kind of take the edge off the malty sweetness. And then the really clean German lager yeast just wraps it all together and man, it's a great sipper. We do test brew a lot of beers here when we're coming up with our recipes. Uh, and this one kind of threw us for a loop a little bit because it is such a large beer, we actually had to physically change the vessels we were brewing in. Generally, um, for a 10 gallon batch, I usually use a 15 gallon mash tun but there was no way this was gonna fit in there. So I had to grab a 20 gallon kettle, outfit it with a false bottom, just to make this mash fit. And it was still pretty darn full. Luckily, we got a really good mash, really good conversion, and after the sparge, we did indeed hit our 1090 gravity. And after a few weeks of fermenting at about 47, after once fermentation is evident, ramp that temp up into the lower 50s, and then you will end up with a really nice, healthy fermentation. And let that go until it's complete. Make sure you give it a really good diacetyl rest, about five to seven days. That will help to ensure there's no off flavors in the beer. And then uh, stick it in a fridge, let it lager for about four, five, six weeks. The longer, the better, but you can pull this off in eight weeks, just like this beer here. And besides having to upsize our mash tun, the biggest challenge to this beer otherwise was getting enough yeast in there to make sure it's got a healthy fermentation. Being a 1090 original gravity wort and is being fermented cold, you are gonna need a ton of yeast. Um, I'd estimate probably about 800 billion cells. So that's either four packs of Omega um, or two massive starters for this 10 gallon batch, otherwise one massive starter. Uh, Cause if you under pitch yeast, you're gonna get some really funky, weird flavors, diacetyl, acetaldehyde, things you don't want if you're gonna put all this much effort into a beer this big. And so speaking of like style guidelines for Doppelbach, uh, this color wise comes in at about 17 SRM, which is pretty much smack dab in the middle of the prescribed range for Doppelbach. Um, also the hoppiness, 25 IBU, 24 is right about there in the middle. So we're shooting down the middle so far. The gravity is a little on the high side. That's fun though, cause it's a challenge in your mash. And uh, the alcohol is a little on the high side, which means you only need one or two. And uh, it just turns out to be a wonderful beer. It's challenging, it's gonna take you some time, it's really gonna test your technique, but man, is it worth it. Doppelbach is generally a beer that's consumed in late winter, early spring, before it starts to really get warm outside, uh, but don't let that pigeonhole you into brewing at any specific time. You can brew this year round. I mean, if you want a really nice, strong, malty beer in the middle of summer, you do you. You could even brew it now and age it until next winter and things would be incredibly smooth you'd really see how the complexity develops and um, it, it'll make a night and day difference. Not necessarily good or bad, but the beer will evolve. So this is the Northern Nader Doppelbach. You can find it on northernbrewer.com, available both in extract and all grain versions. Doppelbach might just be the greatest German beer of all time, the goat. Meh.